Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience, and we are set and ready to get started. Uh, I'm very pleased uh, to introduce uh, our moderator for this morning. Uh, I think, okay, the microphone is on. Uh, yes. yes, it is. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please meet uh, Thierry and Chate, uh, journalist, uh, CNBC Africa, who came from Nairobi, Kenya, especially here for this meeting. And uh, Thierry, over to you. Thank you. Oh, all right. Uh, thank you so much, Andre. Good evening, everyone. Does this happen in every session that I go to? Is it just me? <laughs> Especially for those who were in the session earlier. So I'll start again. Good evening. Good evening. I know it's been a long day and there's a lot more to come over the next couple of days. Um, so before we quickly go in, I'm going to give you two seconds to say hello to the person next to you and ask them why they came here today. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much um, for indulging me on that. My name is Terian Chebet. I am excited to be here this evening. Um, I am the moderator for our session. And we will be looking at a new way to finance smallholder and SME, and basically putting SMEs at the heart of agricultural transformation. Uh, now, if you read around, and I'm sure all of you do, uh, SMEs, of course, play a major role in most economies, and not just in LDCs, but um, across the world. They represent 90% of businesses and 50% of employment worldwide. And of course, access to finance is the second most cited obstacle facing small uh, and medium enterprises. Um, so today, the Common Fund for Commodities, CFC, is launching the Agricultural Commodity Transformation uh, ACT Fund, which will increase the financing that can be offered to viable agribusinesses in least developed countries. Uh, we will be hearing a little bit more about the fund, and because I know there's a lot of interest around this, uh, I want to introduce my panelists, and I'll tell you uh, what to expect as we go on. Uh, we will have some remarks from our chief guests. Uh, thereafter, we'll have some presentations or case studies. And thereafter, we'll have a panel discussion, which will then open up um, to questions from, uh, from yourselves to our panelists. All right. Um, so very quickly, I would like to welcome our first speaker, who is the Secretary of Trade in the Ministry of Industry and Trade in the Republic of Angola, Amadeus uh, Nunes, who will speak to us in Portuguese, uh, but we do have a translator who um, is all with us on the panel. So you do not need your uh, headphones on for now. We, our, our translator will be um, on the panel with us. However, we do have a French um, translator. So if you'd like to listen to the deliberations in French, uh, you can put on your, your headphones. Yes, but we do have a translation. No, 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 not for the speaker. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, let us welcome the Minister, uh, Secretary of Trade and the Ministry of Industry and Trade of Angola, Mr. Amadeo Smune. Boa tarde a todos. Uh, e antes de mais, uh, me desculpa uh, pelo facto da senhora vice-presidente da República. Seria muito estar aqui. Mas ela terminou há 10 minutos a intervenção dela na plenária e tenho um compromisso uh, distante. Ela teve que sair imediatamente e, portanto, encarregou-me. Uh, de fazer a intervenção. É um prazer e feliz por isso encontrar pessoas amigas uh, aqui. Good afternoon, good evening. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here 
and I will be delivering the statement on behalf of uh, Excellency, the Vice President of Angola, who has just delivered the statement at the general debate, and uh, later had to rush off uh, to another appointment which is far away from him. Uh, Ambassador Mohamed Bellal, Director of the Institute of Safety and Safety, Paul Santini, Dr. Amigo Paul Aquino, Director of the Stad, Dr. Ruth Montagori, Tchau, Dr. Tonyari. Permitam-me, antes de mais, aproveitar os cumprimentos de Sua Excelência, Presidente João Manuel Gonçalves Lourenço, Presidente da República de Angola, e de agradecer o convite simulado para participar neste importante evento sobre transformação agrícola e financiamento do baixo risco para agricultores de pequenas e médias empresas. So, um, uh, Ambassador, um, Head of uh, the CFC, uh, the um, Director of Paula Kiwumi, Madame Ruth Poldani, and Mr. Uh, Nicholas uh, Krohn. I'd like to, first of all, uh, express uh, the greetings on behalf of His Excellency Jean Manuel Gonçalves Lorenzo, President of the Republic of Angola, and to thank you for the invitation which was uh, directed to us to participate in this important event about uh, uh, agricultural transformation and low-cost financing uh, at low risk uh, for SMEs. Gostaríamos também de estender, em nome do nosso país, os mais calorosos e fraternais cumprimentos a todos os presentes nesta Assembleia. Equally, on uh, behalf of our country, we'd like to direct uh, all of our warmest regards uh, to all the present here and participants at this event. Este evento marca a reflexão sobre a necessidade do aumento e desenvolvimento de políticas e reformas sectoriais voltadas ao crescimento das capacidades sustentáveis. This event uh, signals a very important thinking about the need to increase uh, and uh, develop uh, the uh, policies and uh, sectoral reforms lead towards uh, the um, growth uh, and uh, uh, sustainable capacity. As the our model convite for in conjunto with our team, that the pre-tage that are present in materials for financing of programs of development das cadeias produtivas das pequenas e médias empresas, com forte impacto nas comunidades locais. Neste contexto, podemos aclarar neste evento aspectos concernentes aos programas de desenvolvimento existentes e, desta forma, identificarmos mecanismos executivos para a obtenção do financiamento com vista a possibilitar a transformação de produtos oriundos do campo no âmbito do fortalecimento das capacidades produtivas nacionais e de segurança alimentar presentado. We have accepted this um, very kind uh, invitation um, in order to, together with ANFED, uh, given its uh, expertise uh, in terms of financing the development programs uh, of uh, productive change for SMEs, uh, with strong impact on uh, um, local communities so that they could be discussed. In this context, um, we uh, can uh, uh, clarify in this event important aspects uh, of our programs uh, of um, development which already exist um, and thereby identify mechanisms which can be executed and put in practice for obtaining financing uh, with a view to making possible the transformation of products uh, uh, produced uh, in the countryside and in agriculture in order to strengthen the cap productive capacities of uh, the country and uh, food security. Yes, Sr. Presidente, the Republic of Angola, in the context of the development of the economy, 
vem crescendo ao longo dos anos e faça desafios regionais e globais, uma nova fase de desenvolvimento com a reorganização, modernização, recuperação e construção de infraestruturas produtivas com vista à criação de condições para um crescimento sustentável. Ladies and gentlemen, the Republic of Angola, in the context of its efforts to diversify its economy, has been experienced in recent years and in the face of challenges which come from the general regional sphere, but also global challenges, a new phase of development in which includes the reorganization, modernization, uh, rebuilding and the building of infra uh, productive infra infrastructure with a view to improving the conditions for sustainable uh, growth. Para o efeito, o governo de Angola criou instrumentos e produtos financeiros com taxas de juros bonificadas, sendo proporcionado financiamento de mais de mil projetos no setor do agronegócio entre 2020 e 2021, num montante superior a 2 mil milhões de dólares. Esta injeção financeira no setor produtivo proporcionou um crescimento de 5% em média do setor do agronegócio no período de 2020 a 2022, assim como tornou-se catalisador da competitividade dos setores agrícola, industrial, dos serviços de logística e distribuição. Actually, the government of Angola has uh, created um, uh, instruments and uh, financial products with uh, preferential interest rates, which have uh, led to the financing of more than 1,000 projects uh, in the sector of agribusiness between 2020 and 2021 for a total value of $2 billion. This injection of financial resources in the productive sectors has uh, led to the growth of 5% uh, on average uh, on, of the business of, uh, of uh, the sector of agribusiness uh, in the period from 2020 to 2022. And this has become the catalyst of competitiveness of the agricultural sector, but also industrial sector and services of logistics and distribution. Como é sabido, estas reformas poderão ajudar na recuperação económica, bem como mitigar os efeitos e as externalidades de Angola no combate à pobreza. As is well known, these reforms uh, will be able to help uh, the economic rebound of the country as well as mitigate the negative ex effects uh, or externalities uh, with which uh, uh, Anthod uh, is a uh, challenge uh, in combating poverty. The pandemic of COVID-19 has been disturbed by various levels of the economy of the world. Consequently, this fact leva-nos a refletir como as, as, as micro, pequenas e médias empresas poderão fazer de face ao contexto atual de manterem operacionais. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused disturbances at several levels of the global economy. Therefore, uh, this fact has led us to think about how uh, small micro uh, enterprises, but also small and medium sized enterprises, can face uh, the present context uh, and keep themselves operational and in business. In this particular, we will be able to attention of the Fundo Comum for the Produce of the in the way that the financing of projects related to this project will give a new impulse to the activities economic and contribute to the progress of the economy. Particularly, we find it uh, highly important uh, the action of the Common Fund for commodities uh, to the extent uh, that uh, financing projects uh, of uh, this uh, kind of economic activity will give uh, a new impulse uh, to economic activities and uh, contribute to economic progress.
caros convidados, minhas senhoras e meus senhores, reconhecemos o trabalho de fundo comum sobre o produto de base e apelamos a semelhança do que, ocorre, do que ocorre em outras latitudes, uma atenção especial aos países em vias de adaptação, dado o impacto que esta pode ter nas economias nacionais. Dear invitees, ladies and gentlemen, when we acknowledge the work done by the Common Fund for Commodities, and uh, we make uh, an appeal uh, similar to what uh, has been uh, undertaken in other forums for a special attention to be paid to countries which are in the pipeline for graduation, given the impact that this can have on national economy. Gostaria de terminar afirmando o nosso compromisso em continuar a trabalhar não só com o Fundo Comum de Estudos de Paz, como com a UNCTAD, para em conjunto identificarmos facilidades de obtenção de financiamento para o setor do turismo nacional. Muito obrigado pela atenção. I'd like to finish my remarks by reaffirming our engagement to work not only with the Common Fund for Commodities, but also with uh, UNCTAD. Uh, in order to together identify and uh, uh, facilitate uh, the obtention of the financing for local productive sectors. Thank you very much. Uh, obrigado, Minister Nunes. Thank you very much for making time to be with us this evening. I would, and we are looking forward to hearing more um, about what Angola is doing in the space that we're talking about this evening. I would like to now welcome uh, Mr. Sani Vergas, who is the Executive Director, Co-Founder and Group CEO of Olam Agri, who is joining us by teleconference. Uh, thank you, Terry Ann. I'm hoping that you can hear me, because I was not able to hear the previous speaker at all. Okay, if you can hear me, then let me just start. Thank you for this opportunity to share with you my perspective. Uh, and firstly, congratulations to CFC on the launch of the Agri uh, uh, ACT. Uh, and I wish the team the very best in creating the impacts that you uh, desire to create. Uh, firstly, I think we must acknowledge that the global food and agricultural system is broken. Uh, we account for roughly a third of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, with 22% directly contributed by agriculture, but also 6% coming from land use changes, and another 3% or so from food loss and waste. We also account for 74% of the world's biodiversity loss, and we consume 71% of the world's freshwater requirements. And we create a lot of externalities by drawing on the ecosystem benefits from nature, and because Mother Nature's back office is not set up, it is not issuing us those invoices. We have 817 million people around the world going to bed hungry every day. And as a result of COVID and the Russia-Ukraine war, we have more and more people fall at to the level C stage of food insecurity. And the latest estimates is about 235 million people cannot uh, survive without external food assistance. And the smallholder farming households, roughly 600 million around the world, who account for uh, roughly 28 to 30% of the world's crop production, uh, but more importantly, 30 to 34% of the world's food production, and 95% of them live below the living income level, and 55% of them do not even generate uh, $1.90 a day. So 55% of them are below the poverty line. How can we be hopeful for the global food and ag system if the smallholder farmers who produce a food uh, cannot even survive in terms of their living incomes, which is roughly four times the minimum poverty line definition? So initiatives like ACT is critical as part of the puzzle in solving for catalyzing the livelihoods of smallholder farmers. The first problem that we have is smallholder farmers suffer from a massive yield gap. For example, in 1960, China's uh, productivity on rice was roughly 1.8 tons per hectare. Today, China is producing roughly 7.5 tons per hectare. 
India was at the same level of productivity as China in 1960, yet today is grown its productivity to about 3.9 tons per hectare, still half of China's rate. And in Africa, if you take an example of Nigeria, which is today producing 1.9 tons per hectare, a neighboring country in West Africa, Senegal, is producing 3.54 tons per hectare. So we have to first close that yield gap in similar geographies, similar agroclimatic conditions, similar levels of uh, prosperity. And that is a function of how well we are able to train the smallholder farmers. Uh, and today we have technology that can come to our assistance. For example, in Cote d'Ivoire, we run an integrated cotton ginning project where we uh, farm uh, with about 20,000 farmers. We need 200 extension officers to provide the farmers uh, knowledge and capacity to significantly improve the yields. When we started this program roughly eight years ago, the cotton yields in Cote d'Ivoire, this is in the north of the country, was about 200 uh, kilograms per hectare. And now, eight years afterwards, we are producing about 475 kilograms per hectare. It is a significant progress, but way off what is the potential in Cote d'Ivoire for smallholder farmers to increase their productivity. So we are now trying to use AI and machine learning to develop an agronomy crop care nudge brain that can provide highly customized, hyper uh, personalized uh, nudges to the farmer on a continuing basis in terms of the next best action the farmer can take on his farm. I want to conclude by making two points. If there are uh, constraints on resources, constraints on time, the two priority things that we need to focus with farmers, smallholder farmers, is first on helping him shift to more regenerative farming, using the five core principles that we believe constitutes the key aspects of regenerative farming. Firstly, we want to make sure as much or minimize soil disturbance as much as possible. For example, in cotton growing, the example that I gave you earlier, 24% of the greenhouse gas emissions is a function of how we are preparing and tilling the land for planting cotton. So if you want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the first thing you have to do is to reduce the intensive till that we are currently used to. The second principle is to make sure that we keep the cover crops uh, alive and therefore add uh, carbon sequestration, but also improve the fertility of the soil. We lose 12 million hectares of topsoil each year, which is the size of Greece, and 24 billion tons of the topsoil is lost in the way we farm the land. Uh, so I won't, but regenerative farming for me is one part of what we should prioritize. And second is really focus on food loss and waste. In Nigeria, in the paddy supply chain, Nigeria is now a very large importer of paddy. It can produce all the paddy that it needs. Unfortunately, today it is losing about 33, 34% of the paddy between harvest and the uh, mill and largely coming out of the threshing practices or uh, harvesting practices. We worked uh, on a pilot along with Bagarigan University, enrolling 35,000 farmers across 1,900 cooperatives. And we found that we were able by providing them a mechanical reaper and thresher reduce paddy losses on farm and near farm losses, uh, roughly 40%, improve incomes by $200 per uh, hectare and reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 1.75 tons. We need public, private, civil society, uh, unnatural collaboration and pre-competitive alliances to make a true difference. So there are two things to prioritize. I will say, let's prioritize these two things. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vergas. I hope you will stay with us online. We do have uh, a great conversation coming on as well as a Q&A, and we hope you'll be able to stay online. Um, I believe there will be some questions coming to you as well. All right, um, I would like now to welcome uh, Mr. Paul Akiwumi, the Director at Division of Africa, LDC at ANCTA, to give us his opening remarks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh... 
It gives me great pleasure to be part of this very important event. And on behalf of the Second General of Ontem, I would like to spend a sincere thanks to all of you here in the conversation meeting in the part of the community. This side event is about the launching of the agricultural democracy transformation. And we all understand how important financing in the especially in LDCs, but you know, investors in the space of We also know how important it is to transform the agriculture sector in developing economies making it more productive, more competitive, and a more viable part of the national economy. One which will drive the sustainability and green and inclusive development. This fund may constitute an important part of the solution to the fomenting challenge. This is why Anfred welcomes the establishment of the Agricultural Commodity Transformation Fund. It is clear that trade finance is crucial, but is rarely available for agri and SMEs. It is also obvious that working capital loans must be flexible to accommodate the needs of agribusinesses. Funds are also needed for the expansion and enhanced value addition. And finally, technical assistance is critically important to build capacity of farmers and agribusinesses. Financial support is also needed to bridge the gap between small farm holders and markets. The building value chains in and around the agriculture sector is a key solution. All of it is very important and indeed considered in the provisions of the fund. And this is a very good sign in good thing. Let me reiterate that ultimately the funds needs to support the establishment of LDC a viable, competitive, and internationally integrated agriculture sector, one which will provide employment, generate know-how, and one which will bring small farm holders into the realm of the global agribusiness. Ladies and gentlemen. The key to the overall success is indeed in financing and capacity building. This is needed for building domestic productive capacity and create a robust agricultural sector. No economy has ever thrived without fostering productive capacities. We have already heard about the importance of building economy-wide national productive capacities in our freezer side of them. Productive capacities are critical for structural transformation and economic diversification. And as a consequence, poverty reduction and inclusive, sustainable, and green growth and development. Unted is dedicated and committed with its cross country, cross continental experience and expertise to support countries in their endeavor to build productive capacities and to advance economic diversification. And this fund will support economic diversification through ensuring that local potential, the potential of local farmers is unleashed. I thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. I'd like to now welcome uh, His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed Dilal, uh, the Managing Director of CFC. Thank you. Uh, good evening to everyone. At the risk of repeating the same thing what I said again, I think we'd like to first acknowledge the presence of all the good hearted people here. I know this is the time that we should go back home and enjoy your dinners. So we are serving you another kind of dinner, good for thought. <laughs> and I welcome you. Let me begin by thanking our uh, distinguished Minister from Angola, 
you brought blessings from your president, vice president, from your people. Hello, Angola. You are an inspiration for this fund. I thank you for that. And we took a quick note of your uh, guidance for us. And we can assure you that we'll do our best to live up to your expectation. Next to Ankat, I think, as I said, that we came into being long 33 years back to an Ankat led process. So we owe our, our, our birth, our existence, and survival to Ankat. And I'm very happy to see not only our good friend, Mr. Akino, is there, his colleagues, and others. More importantly, I would like to convey this message to the Secretary General that this fund that we, what we are now trying to launch is absolutely an inspiration that we draw since she came into the office and the kinds of messages we try to give up there, to bring to the level of responsible that and actually. So it is an inspiration that we draw to from her. And also, for the kind of people that we come across on a daily basis, I just want to introduce you one, Mr. Ruth Kinoti. She came all the way from uh, Nairobi, and we have a very special relationship. I just, uh, on the year I was elected to this post, it was December 2019. And you all know that December 2023, December, uh, February 2020, COVID came and everything came to close down. We were paused. And as far this time, I have to go back home, my country, Bangladesh, to get my visa done. And I got trapped there for three months. I could not come back. And to make it even more painful, I cannot even go to visit the village that my mom, my mom was working to visit me. It's that kind of, you know, a stalwart, long case that we had. After long three months, when I came back, the first thing that I saw on my travel is that Letter from Ms. Ruth Kenoti. So that's why I think our love that she has became. And she was at that time, she came to us because we funded uh, into her business, which is uh, a totally female led three sisters. She's the eldest one. So it's a female led business. It's a very simple thing. The buy shall come from the small holders and the process is in the flower. And we only made arrangement to her that since we are investing in you, please try to see that you pair the small hole but in advance so that they can plan ahead about what of the message they have. They said, okay, but the letter was that, sorry, we promised that we will pay the small holders in advance. Now, now, now the time is too bad. My warehouse is full of unsold inventory. So I cannot keep up my promise unless you give me some more money. I just recently joined and I don't know what to do. And it's very kind of my colleagues are also there also in two minds. We just arrive and you first thing you go to the board for more money. I said, no matter what, we go. Long story short, we entered the law, our board and both approved our details. We gave her some money. She went back home happy. And we also, it is the COVID time, we also thought that this is also the time that she can also try to and to increase the kind of food fortification that you are doing. So in the processing flour from sorghum, why don't you do some food fortification, add some minerals and vitamin? And she followed up on the decision and she went back home, long story short, then June 2022, probably, she came back to me, ambassador, take your money back. I'm going home. I don't need your money anymore because local bank is now ready to start me. This is what uh, precisely the definition of common funds or commodity. We just try to fund a small folder so that they can buy more from the, sorry, SMEs, so that they can buy more from the smallholders and give themselves us from the price of profit. It's not nano science. So we are so grateful to you. I think I don't need to get into more details because next time I guess I think you made it very easy for me. You said all, and the way that these times, the externalities and the new kind of degenerative culture that everything is coming. 
but we work in this world of commodity where there's a constant pressure on those small holders to produce more. If you don't produce more, you may go hungry. And when you try to more produce, there are chances that you may harm the planet. So this is an irony. And for any, I think, kind of empty stomach, it is very difficult to make them understand that what are we going to need. So our priority is to make their basic essential secure so that they can be in a listening mode, receptive mode. And this is the strong point of our common funds that we are one of the few organizations that have both implementation arms and the technical assistance arm, both under the same group. Now, these funds, we are planning to bring this technical assistance of a big fund, a big part of this delivery so that we can give the people the kind of information that is required so that they can bring much more externality. Because I, in our line of work, we came to see that money is not everything. Information is the new currency. Some people seem to be doing certain things in certain wrong way because it was not told that there is another way of doing things. So please, Mr. Sunny Bargesi and all others, we would like you to be a part of this because at the end of the day, if these people don't keep your supply line open, so I don't know how long we can continue to be in this. Maybe we can do into some other kind of system, but I can tell you that that's the, that kind of transition is also not very easy because there is nothing in life that is not being touched by commodities. I'm not talking about an every point. So essentially what we are trying to do, Uncut helps us to come into being because they wanted us to address the problem of commodity dependency. Because the problem of commodity dependency is kind of in a state of an economy that makes you vulnerable. And when you are vulnerable, then any kind of shocks like that COVID and other things make you much more kind of suffer than any other. So the other thing is that this commodity dependency related vulnerability is also something it's very difficult to address. Many countries after they are, I think, kind of best of effort, Angola, trying their best to come out of some commodity dependence. I think it's still there. Dependence on the commodity is on a very healthy 90 plus. Why? Because if it's not very easy, unless we bring in science and technology. And there is another very strong thing, this fund that we are now trying to bring to you, for the first time, our board gave us the permission to receive funds from the private sector. Previously, we are not allowed to receive funds from any entity other than the government, sovereign government sector. Why we are going into that? Because now we can think that more and more businesses are the much faster, much effective provider of solution than the government. And we cannot do anything other than that. So this is an enterprise of public-private partnership because this future, these are this generation, we all owe it together. And this is why we would like to bring to your attention another aspect of this, this supply chain as we are going forward, now I think in, in, a, in, a, in a country like United States, this millennial and general Z almost comprises the 50% of the population. And this generation of people is much more sustainably minded than you and I. And this is a good thing for me because I believe that my son, my daughter, they are much more sustainable and they value better, they carry better values than I. So we now, anchoring these things onto them so that in the first discussion that we had secondly in had today on how we can make use of literacy pickles, not only as a commodity or a diversification, but also to bring healthy life to you, we more and more try to invest in this young generation so that they can make the brands like Inspect Tunibarkesi and others listen to us more than what they are doing now. Because these young generations 
And I am sure that we are not going to reshape or kind of reform the capitalism. That what they will do, they will try to restore the original glory of the capitalism through their sustainable technology. And this is where we are within our scope. And we would like you to be, be our ambassadors of this fund. And please all come together to act for the F fund. Let us act together. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Bilal, for sharing with us uh, some of the issues that informed uh, the division of the ACT fund, um, as well as giving us the vision for it. Uh, we'll get to hear a little bit more about um, the fund itself directly from uh, Mr. Nicholas when we come back to him in a moment. Uh, but for now, we'd like to listen to a video by Tammy Numa, uh, who's been a leader in impact investing for over 30 years. Uh, she serves as a CEO and managing partner of Eco Enterprises Fund, which has invested in nearly 50 unique emerging businesses in its three funds under uh, management. Tammy, can you hear me? Hi, I'm Tammy Newmark, CEO and managing partner of Eco Enterprises Fund, and I'm thrilled to be here today. I'm sorry I can't be there in person. However, um, I'm really honored to be able to present Eco Enterprises Fund to you. We've been partners with the Common Fund for Commodities for many years now, and um, we're really um, happy to have this working partnership as they launch their um, new fund, the Agricultural Commodity Transformation Fund, which I know is um, part of the focus of this uh, discussion. So who is Eco Enterprises Fund? Eco Enterprises Fund is an impact investing fund that has been around. We've been around for more than 20 years now. We're women led, we're women managed, and we focus on investing in companies in Latin America that focus on biodiversity, focus on social equity, and focus on climate solutions. We have been doing this um, uh, for many years now and have been building portfolios and building companies that has really, we've seen sort of transformative change um, in the region. Um, we're now on our uh, fourth uh, fund, uh, Eco Enterprises Partners for LP, and um, uh, Common Fund for Commodities has been um, uh, an investor in our fund. Fund two and fund three, and we look forward to welcoming them to fund four as well. So as you can see here, it's uh, our trajectory. And for many of you in this audience you may be familiar with the impact investing industry, but certainly it has uh, picked up momentum over the last um, few years, focusing on impact outcomes concurrent with financial returns. Um, as you can see, we were launched under the umbrella of the Nature Conservancy, one of the largest global environment conservation organizations in 1998. 1998 versus 2023 is a much different reality in terms of uh, the challenges at hand, as well as um, uh, many other uh, players that are focused on investing in SMEs, investing in rural communities, investing in emerging markets or the global south. That has been sort of our clarion all since um, our launch. What we do is build these portfolios of investments of companies that range from um, agricultural processing to ag tech, that range from reforestation, um, agro um, forestry, um, a range of different agro oriented companies that um, are located in biological corridors of Mesoamerica, the Indian Amazonian region, um, very important ecosystem, uh, ecosystems and watersheds. All of that is critical because our overall investment mandate is to conserve and preserve the natural resource base concurrent with generating livelihoods for local communities, many times indigenous communities. So you could see our tra trajectory here um, with each of our fund and in each of the fund, we've focused on next generation businesses, you know, businesses that went from the first fund with received capital, early 
stage, the first organic cacao company, the first organic flour company, the first organic spice company, the first organic shrimp company to um, today where it includes um, companies that um, reforest lands with organic limes uh, to offset degraded cattle pastures or um, actually works on coming up with a unique blue dye um, that is extracted from biodiversity. And this company actually that is in our portfolio works with uh, communities under the UN um, uh, Nagoya Protocol um, and access to benefit sharing. And so in each of these portfolios, we really try to come up with models, come up with examples that could um, serve to um, generate interest among other businesses and, and really change the way um, uh, business and conservation is achieved in, in, these, um, in this region. So um, what we do is target a handful of UN SDGs and um, you know, our core uh, mission is biodiversity and natural resource um, management. Um, that is of course integrated with um, social equity. Most of our companies um, are all 2X global challenge, um, uh, meet that, that criteria. We um, look at companies that are all community-based. All of our companies need to have working partnerships with the local communities. And that is key for the long-term sustainable future of our planet, as well as for the local communities. Really, um, it's incredible to see those working relationships uh, between um, local peoples and the businesses, whether it's in cooperatives, whether it's with supply chains, whether it's with small producers, um, that is really important in order to scale and in order to expand um, impact, as well as generate the type Turns that um, the companies um, are uh, generating in order to plow back capital and plow back money um, through jobs, through by products, through equity uh, relationships um, with the local community. So what is our approach and um, our impact investing approach? We first identify businesses, those leaders, those uh, champions in the region that are um, really pushing fantastic and compelling business opportunities that we could invest in. And then what we do is we cherry pick those um, examples and then invest the um, growth capital that's the capital, very much a venture capital approach to these um, uh, companies. And then we uh, bring in value-added uh, services. And so that could be on the business side or that could be on the environmental, social, or governance side. That institutional capacity building in both of those regards are critical for the strength and success of our company. And then what we do is we scale them so they could replicate, so that they could expand in the region, expand in other areas. And increasingly, we're seeing expansion global south to global south. One of our companies has just recently, um, Mexico-based, um, Latin America-based, has just recently expanded into India and Kenya. Yeah, and that is really uh, an incredible um, opportunity for other um, op other companies um, in the region to also expand. The most important thing about the scaling, though, is that it does take other partners. And so our companies look towards other impact investors as well. We bring in partners. We bring in trade finance. And I know that the uh, Act Fund of uh, Common Fund Commodities may be just that partner for some of our deals, especially when there is an alignment of interests and, and capital needs. And um, we do that with... Um, of various of our investors. And that is uh, really sort of an incredible uh, plus for our companies as well as for uh, all of our stakeholders. So we um, have built these portfolios and as you saw in an earlier um, slide, 
um, in the first uh, invest, uh, investment fund, we invested in 23 businesses. And then since then, we've invested in 10, 11, 12 um, uh, portfolio companies. And as our uh, portfolio uh, sort of comes together overall over these 20 years, we've invested in, in around um, 50 companies. And um, to look at sort of the aggregated and cumulative um, uh, and results from that portfolio when you really you add up sort of their expansion, their work with the local communities, and um, what their um, outcomes are. And so you can see that all the companies being still being SMEs um, have generated about um, two and a half billion dollars of sales of bringing that capital, bringing the, that funding back into the region, back into these areas in order to provide that economic cushion as well as that long-term livelihoods um, for um, local peoples. You could see the additional um, financing we brought in um, from other impact investors. You could see sort of how many communities have been involved. There's been um, over a thousand, almost 1,500 communities involved, and that includes about 400 um, NGOs and other types of partners. And when you um, look at sort of aggregated these numbers, you could see that there's been sort of impact um, across the board of about 400,000 people saving their um, uh, saving their natural resource base, um, living in these rural areas, uh, generating the types of alternative in income and um, livelihoods that they're looking for, and really um, creating the overall uh, planetary health for themselves as well as uh, for um, the rest of the peoples on this earth. This is extremely important because um, it's these areas going forward that um, will require much more focus because of the ecosystems, the preciousness of the ecosystems because of the flora and fauna that should be conserved and preserved and, and the forestry cover. And so being able to integrate um, livelihoods with the natural resource base, with um, uh, equity for um, these local peoples. That's what Eco Enterprises is all about. So I thank you so much for um, being able to uh, present, and um, I look forward to questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tammy, and I see that you have also joined us online. Uh, Tammy will stay with us and will be able to join in uh, when we have our Q&A session uh, later. So, thank, uh, Tammy, thank you uh, thank so you. much for making time to be with us this evening. All thank right, you. I'd like to now welcome uh, Ruth Pinotti. Uh, I believe you've got a very good introduction uh, from Ambassador Bilal Anya. Uh, so, I'll just hand it over to you, give us a little introduction to yourself. Uh, of course, Ruth is the CEO of Shannon Investment from Kenya, and she has grown uh, Shannon from a small family business to an impactful social business serving over 7,000 smallholder farmers, um, mobilized into one, over 100 produce and marketing farmers. Um, it's difficult to defend yourself when uh, 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 a lot of good has been done. Um, Ambassador, we are truly grateful that we received that money. And we didn't bring back the money. I will tell this audience why we uh, gave back, common part of knowledge, the money that we desperately needed and that we feel desperately need. Uh, Shannon Investment Limited is a, um, a social business that is currently working actually with for a happy child on Kenyan because they have grown. So we are part of that farmer that grows in these numbers. And uh, when I got the, the invitation, I felt very happy and I feel I sacrificed time. And uh, I'm so happy that the uh, Shannon Bank for Communities with the resources uh, is needed. We come and uh, uh, talk about ourselves. 
because we are sure that what we are doing is working. It is supporting, uh, it is responding to most of the, uh, the challenges that the, the students have talked about. And actually, there can be prosperity, even among the very uh, small uh, rural, uh, small in the family. Uh, Shannon, uh, uh, by the, over the years, we have been aggregated in a project from small farmers and just selling oil. But uh, from around the 2015, we started processing in a small way and uh, uh, selling the uh, growing market of the uh, uh, medium to um, uh, low, low medium income panel. Our vision is to uh, grow into a sustainable business that provides solutions to small farming and the quality affordable food uh, for the consumers. Um, if we can have the business model, how we do it, we are happy that uh, we have succeeded in uh, um, developing an all these uh, business model where we have the farmer for a long time, just the farmer and the at the center. Uh, the next slide, please. And uh, um, recently, we were able to include the consumers also. So our business is focusing on ourselves as a business, yes. Um, um, but the farmers also will supply. And now we are happy we have something to fix the consumers. And uh, guided by... Uh, our desire to provide an efficient, safe, and affordable food. A Chilean would understand when it's not for safety of food, uh, it's a challenge right now uh, in Kenya. We are happy that uh, our business model is also helping us to respond to challenges of the uh, climate uh, things in, in, in a big way. We began in a small way, uh, sensitizing farmers telling farmers that it can be done, uh, uh, encouraging them to come into groups. Uh, we were linked to good people who could uh, uh, finance our business. Even when we had the hard collateral, I, I would be happy to know from people like you, Tapito, Rubber Banks, because the banks, the, the local banks, the, of course, the, we were getting finance from them in a small way. But uh, we couldn't get much because uh, uh, we didn't have for last year. Next slide, please. Thank you. And, and then the next. Yeah, so those are uh, images uh, of mobilization and basis uh, uh, from uh, some of our uh, investors. Next slide, please. Very small beginning. I would like uh, to look at that uh, um, as. Uh, I, I look at that feeling, especially the one of the machines. We, we started with one roller mill, one. And uh, we, we had rented the uh, apprentices at the Kenya Industrial Estate in Meru. And uh, we, we had to six even farmers produce outside the veranda because uh, the store uh, we had rented was uh, pretty small. So growth was gradual. I'm saying all this because I want uh, to encourage uh, the small business people who are starting that uh, it, 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 it's quick a journey. Uh -huh. But then in 2018, we encountered a game changer, a uh, common part for commodity. Um, uh, there's a picture next to me of the uh, um, the officer from Common Spot for Commodities, I've not forgotten her name, she was Rita. He came to actually uh, find out whether what we had written uh, was okay or was true, because uh, uh, we, we were asking for a lot, 610,000 uh, USD, and we didn't think to have uh, so much. But actually, um, uh, we went out with Rita and she was able to see our work next week. And uh, our dream was to uh, build a factory. Well, in the middle of nowhere, 
and uh, um, actually CHD, we are still grateful to the news. They funded a dream, a dream in the wilderness. Where our factory is located, is near Ikeolo. Very little development. Um, there was no water, there was no electricity. And these are all things we had written in our proposal that we will think up our home and we will help improve the roads. And the uh, Rita, the officers from CLT, went right to where our dream lab was. So we were next slide, the link. And there uh, we are today. Uh, that is actually our factory. Uh, about that, I think we still come to Kenya soon. Yeah, we would like to invite the. Uh, yeah, thank you. We, we would like to invite as many uh, people willing to invest in this field uh, because I want to assure you that. It is a game changer. Uh, thousands of those smallholder farmers have improved their livelihood. You can go to the next one. Actually, our factory is now a learning center. And uh, we are providing lots of solutions to the smallholder farmers. We have the drying services, cleaning, and uh, we are so happy that we are able, like I said earlier, to bring different food to the market, food that people can actually uh, attract. We have many jobs that have been uh, created. Uh, many businesses have grown or are growing al alongside the, uh, the value chain. And uh, so many people are there to say, I am because of the challenge, and we are very happy. We have realized improved the resilience to climate change and the food uh, challenges because of our work uh, with the farmers. Um, next, uh, just a little uh, about the numbers for those who are happy to uh, uh, give forecast. Uh, like I said, we have uh, uh, quite some tremendous support from uh, impact lenders and donors. Uh, and that is how our work has been able to um, support the small the farmers. Yes, some people have asked, uh, is the uh, is GFI GDP in time, is the uh, uh, USA GFI in time, is GFI in time, would you have more? We said, yes, we would still be falling, honestly. Maybe by now we would have put up a small, uh, you know, uh, building. Maybe we would have bought a second dollar. But I want to assure you, uh, we are now able to process a minimum of 100 times for the associated grain uh, in the new factory. What is our strategic direction? We can move to the next one. Thank you. And I'm so happy that you're serving me this year. I see some voice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So uh, that is the, uh, the root uh, of our factory covered by a uh, solar panel. So actually, um, like 75% of our power during the day is the uh, solar. We are still supported by the um, uh, Kenya power. Which is, uh, we are the national grid. Uh, but we are so happy that uh, we are able to reduce the amount that uh, we consume. It also reduces uh, our our uh, cost by again about 25 percent. Uh, we are hoping to maintain a collaborative uh, relationship with the farmers so that they can produce high value climate smart uh, uh, crops, millet, sweet potatoes, uh, sorghum, and, and, and uh, those others. And uh, through Anthony Emilio, I learned a farm that the uh, now I know one of the greens we have actually has a name yes. because uh, we have been uh, thinking of how can we make uh, a food like food for people more available uh, to more people without the, you know, everyone having to access the raw live uh, food for And that is one of the things I'm hoping up 
So um, any other uh, fund can help us uh, too, because actually we will venture uh, more into the new species, new species, they are new species, yeah, new species. I I don't know how to say. We are new species. Thank you, Terian. New species. Uh, <laughs> and I think one of our new brands, the first one, a new species. What are we doing? We are excluding uh, all needs. If you want to put all needs uh, into flat, there is a different value. And it's a step of food in Kenya. Every household, I think, must consume the value every day, whether it's breakfast or lunch or dinner. Now, I, we depend on scripted needs. It is now getting less and less available. So we are saying instead of wasting uh, so much of the, the meat, we would want to present our own meal. Number one, it is more nutritious, it is more filling, but we cannot afford to cook it because it will take 30 minutes to one hour. So with the cushion now, we are able to make ready to eat. It's just hot water and uh, you mix it, or hot meal, mix it, and it is good. And I tell you this, another game changer, TF2, uh, game changer, and it will remain celebrated with you because uh, uh, we are hoping alongside this now, we are able to bring also a bladed uh, glass for baking because almost everyone is eating some form of bread every day. So if we are able to stabilize the food for that, we can more than that is to grow. We will provide the other crop that uh, we talked about. So we are we have seen lots of benefits that um, we do with this. So and uh, we are talking about this will be our first export crop. So the reason why we have to give up the CFC if we go to the next uh, uh, slide, is because uh, we realize that more and more farmers need to provide their projects. We were born with working capital in dollars from uh, youth capital and uh, and uh, rubber bands, and we are still great to they should start to give us lots of their dollars with uh, little or no collateral. Uh, I think when it comes to payment, and I want to encourage every SME, if you want to grow, then you have to be faithful to your funders. You have to be faithful to your level. You have to be faithful to the bank. They will cost difficult to keep and pay dollars when we are selling in Kenya Chilling. And Kenya Chilling costs news to news to the dollars. And we realize that spread was going to kill us. And that is why. And we approach the local staff. In my business, CFC has given us that for us. That factory that you have seen is now our current collateral to family bank of Spain. We now uh, put together all the loans. They say the a CFC, uh, and we were trying, honestly, when you were writing that, we were saying, I wish we didn't have rubber bands and good capital because here this loan was very well spread, you know, over many years, very friendly terms, very supportive when you were going through COVID. A lady called Sonia, PSP, and she was under the guidance of the, uh, the, the uh, management, would write to us how are we doing, and we kept on trying to them like you have had, and they would listen to us. So it was very difficult to have. But then we think it our based on habits. So we gave up CFC, repaid their money, we paid good capital, we paid the rubber bank, and we lost a lot to that CFC. But we are happy we are not dealing with um, uh, that anymore. But I want to assure you, the working capital needs are increasing because the numbers of farmers are increasing and our dreams for opportunities are also uh, increasing. 
The farmers now in their groups are almost ready themselves for investment. We have several farmer groups who do not now need us to support them to, buy, uh, to bring their, their produce. They are able to aggregate their produce, uh, bring it together, and uh, um, sell it to us. So I, I have right so that I can leave room for patients. Otherwise, your story, you know, it's, it's long. It's many years. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ruth. I am looking forward to um, hearing your story when um, the question is coming. Uh, Ambassador Delay, we need to check out in a moment. We appreciate you making time to come and be with us this evening. Thank you. All right, um, so we will now uh, move on to our next speaker. And um, I guess I could ask for uh, Andre, would it be all right for us to do this right after uh, Nicola to open it up um, so we have a more interactive towards the end because of the interface? All right. All right, so uh, Nicola, so throw it over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. And, uh... Thank you, Ms. Lynch, for the kind words. Yeah, um, thank you very much, and thanks for staying with us this evening. I now have the honor to present the new agriculture commodity of the fund. Tax, which we know by now, is the impact investing project that has been developed and sponsored by the Common Fund for Commodities, and we uh, are now starting here for the let me briefly introduce the CFC. Uh, for some of you who have been here uh, in our lunch session, that this might be a bit repetitive. Uh, we are an intergovernmental financial institution established under the agreement of the United Nations. So, this is all one of the one member of the institutional investment. Um, we have our focus is on the participation with about the next slide that we can start with see, Andre, is the our mission statement. Yeah, we want to make commodities work for everyone. It's hurt. And that is the goal for the reason it does not work. Of all, all the farmers are first led by the processes. And our focus is to get you and done. And then it's what the people again power to get the system. On slide four. You can see we believe that this probably in the aviation industry, the next all the farmers with a global high value market. And to have access to those markets, uh, small order, uh, small and medium sized enterprises, institution countries, and all the state of new roles that they appear under the market. The next challenge is that these attributes require. Adequate finance to operate and grow, which we need and do not have. It's too small uh, for banks, and they are too big for microfinance. These banks, which have uh, many different countries are reluctant to loan to the country that we have to And that goes to the country. And that is why we have to use that subject in the list. We have to use adequate financial products for these SMEs for them in order to be able to grow and offer. We go to the next slide, Andre, that's the slide number five. The demand for our products is huge and far outstrips the core resources of the CXC. In 22 alone, we received over 500 loan applications of which we only could serve 
abstraction of, uh, despite the fact that there were a number of other companies, a, a, a wide array with business cases and, and financial viability, which would have made them qualify. Huh? And that is why we want to increase our scope. Yeah? Uh, we want to serve more of those SMEs, and we want to do that because we want to reach more farmers, and for that, exactly that, we have now created the agricultural commodity transformation fund. Now, we seek to ultimately mobilize $100 million in uh, capital and an additional $10 million in technical assistance grant funding. And we will put our money where our mouth is, in that we will put $20 million US dollars of our own core funding as, uh, uh, as say, first loss grant C shares, uh, which makes it then a little bit more attractive, hopefully, for other investors to join uh, at. And uh, yeah, here is the time to, to express that the goal of ACT is not to maximize financial return. We want to preserve investors' capital. We want to reward with one, two, or maybe three percent of interest, but our maximum or the, what our target is, is a maximum of impact. That is really what we want. On the next slide, six, slide six, you will see that uh, act in context you'll see at the center the stylized value chain where we consider as it needs to be in the center to be the drivers the motor of these value chains they have access to international markets many of them have they have access to market information and at the same time they have access to smallholder farmers and they can channel this information and also open up the markets for the smallholders these smes in producing countries have access to these smallholders, they know the local context, and they do, and they can deal with all the informalities that come along. Act Fund will provide the crucial resource, and that is adequate finance, but also we will provide technical assistance. We have good experience with that. With technical assistance, we don't need grand projects that are going to be tailored around investees. What we mean is if we find the opportunity that an investee needs a market analysis, Yes, if they need try and if the CFO needs some training, yes. If they have difficulties in organizing their, their smallholders, yes, we can do that. We have uh, six staff at the CFC who do nothing else but that, and they have done over 100 projects things in the last 10 years. They tailor this TA project for a real thing. So the whole exercise, and that's the goal, as I said, is going to lead to considerable impact on the right side for people, and for the planet. And I will deal with a little bit more about impact in the, in the coming slide. Go to slide number seven. First, uh, I would like to explain to you in practice really what it is that we will offer. We will provide finance to SMEs, which have a turnover of roughly $1 million or above, and which are active in agri value chains. And we will provide them with four different product classes. It's very by far the most popular, and that is where ACT is going to specialize on and put the emphasis on, is, is trade finance. That may sound very technical, it is not. What, we, what that means is that we provide SMEs with cash funding at the time when the season harvest starts, when the SME needs to go out and buy macadamia nuts, needs to buy coffee or cashew nuts or, or whatever. This is a huge problem. SMEs are cash strapped. It's like having a, a nice motor car when you have a processing entity, but you have no fuel. Yeah? You can't do anything with it. So that's what we provide. Usually there is a financing demand between 90 and 180 days because then it's when the retailer in the US or whatever is make, making the final payment for these patients. So what we hear very often from people like Mrs. Ruth or any others, you give us more money when the season starts, we can do more business. We have enough purchase orders, we just simply do not have the money. And to structure these kinds of loans is something that we are all, we, we like to believe that we are good at it because we do it every day. Yeah? And the really good thing about it is that we do not ask for any flat. It's not necessarily structured in a different way. On the next slide, I come to the impact of slide eight. As I, I mentioned, we seek to preserve the capital of our ex investors with a modest markup because the majority uh, returns on their investment will be on social and environmental impact. And if you look on the right side, the 
impact targets are ambitious, look scary. Yeah? Uh, we, we seek to reach 1 million people with substantial and, and, and sustainable income increases. But uh, these figures are not bold claims, but simple extrapolations of what we have reached with our CFT core funding. So it, it, it is doable. Yeah? We will put special emphasis on women, not only because we know Mrs. Yoon, but also we have other rising stars in our portfolio. And I must say that women frequently yeah. outperform their, their male counterparts. Yeah. We will take an emphasis on carbon tickets. We will support agroforestry. We have experience with that perennial tree, tree crops, roads, and also regenerative agriculture. These are hot topics. You know about it. I'm an agronomist myself. Uh, so, so we can deal it and to deal with it. And, and also we are slowly beginning to learn how to, to teach or how to manage with this farmers better and self. And what the new thing is on, on the horizon is biodiversity, something that we ourselves are still learning about, but we are learning rapidly. This will lead, or all these targets, we need to reach the uh, SDGs, which you find there at 1, 5, 8, 12, and 13. There will be others, but these are the major ones. That we will work. If we go to the next slide, slide 9, the CFC, yeah, that's us, will play a key role in the ACT Fund, not only as a sponsor, yeah, with a vested interest, because if the fund fails or if there's going to be problems, our 20 million are the first ones that will go, but also as a fund manager. We will bring in our own experience or our experience as an organization, and we will bring in a really experienced, highly qualified, and highly motivated crew. We will bring in our network that is public and private, which has grown over the last 13 years. And we will bring in functional operations and process because what we do is uh, uh, loan management is what we can do for the last 10 years. And we bring in strong pipeline. Yeah, in the next slide, you uh, see some cornerstone terms. Act on can summarize form as we believe it should look like. Those I have not touched yet is the target ticket size we look at individual investments with investment for around two million US dollars, which is a little bit more than what we do with CFC core finance. The structure we would like to register this as an alternative investment fund with the Netherlands government South Advisory with our headquarters now in Amsterdam. Uh, the lifetime of the fund is going to be 10 years, but if it really goes well, we would like to convert it into an evergreen uh, uh, product like that to be seen. We would like investors to minimum invest a million dollars and, and uh, to stay for at least five years. Yeah, I hope I or we were able to raise your interest. Fundraising will start soon. I started now. We are excited and we will be happy to provide you any information at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Nicholas. Uh, we had put together some questions um, for the panelists, but in the interest of time, I want to open up to the floor uh, for you to be able to ask your questions to our panelists. If you do have any questions, please uh, raise your hand, introduce yourself, and um, direct your question to the panelists that you'd like to answer. Yes. We are a private company um, where we are doing the commodity production as it were. But also currently we've been given uh, an assignment to manage uh, some property. And uh, we've been working to develop about the uh, 2000 website, uh, the plan, um, uh, going forward. Um, one of the things uh, why I'm here to find out um, how best uh, we can partner with you uh, because we need uh, to access the paper market 
Jawabnya saya berasa itu berpuas tidak jalan. Asal ini lihat kasih ini kita orang tak cukup on pensal dan pensal kita kita bawa di kotak kotak kerja. Tapi nak siapa bawa sebagai jenjang sistem bantuan harus dijalan dia dijalan dia. What we need is we are bridge with the market, with the market, but also to control the energy capital and checkpoints because we have a lot of different kind of things. Different part of that. So what I want to say that I will stand. We are ready to act, and we want action. And we need to partnership. What sort of pipeline we have? Uh, you could pass the microphone. If I want to speak to you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to see you back here to thank you. And we are going to turn from my friend, the Peter Lee, who is here. Thank you for your attention. Um, my name is Tracy Nandi from Hanji. I'm the president uh, and founder of the Farmers Association of Tampa. First, I am completely with Tampa. Um, we are in to addressing the small scale planning. We have a small scale financing. As we said, we are in the same We do your and we saw some a lot of people. But mostly, at the time, we got together. And we did quite a lot of a market driven country. We look for the market, we have seen that that are in the industry. We have market to make more of that. Uh, and obviously, the millions of us will have market to make more of that. We have market to make more of that. We have another market to make more of that. Another market to make more of that. For now, I really get and put in a storage with which is here. You have no money. So we would also like to start now with scarcity and see how you can work together. Because my culture isn't enough. If I is a family in first all the water, they want to date, they want to story. And we have the challenge now to talk about why do you have to make this project to take the people who are now ready to take the news? The government offers us nine degrees in such a non perfect context. And once we work in the air, we clear it. We don't renew all the taxes for all the members paying. So we would like to see that I think the right thing that you can make this is only one or one. It is easy how much you can have that. And my partner in the line can put the film and change. We can create jobs. We have a unit for women in our organization. And we have a program. Right, for five hundred years, it is six months, and we have ten problems. So, what are problems? But 
All right. Thank you very much um, for your thoughts. We we have another question or comment right here at the front. Thank you very much. Um, this is a Jonathan Tassaji, we are the National Society from Social Storm, um, providing a finance for companies to respond to that. Uh, just a few questions. Um, there is some like timeline for this, because it seems like this from Sunday's notes to at what point would it make sense for companies, partners to reach out? Um, as well as the process, so is it going to be the process proposal, um, direct outreach to investment uh, officers? I think clarity on, on that would be really helpful. And then one thing uh, which we really mentioned, which was critical, is about the target to risk. Um, given that commodities are often revenues in the currency, and, and I imagine you're lending either in euros or in dollars. Um, is there any uh, sense to create partners with more local banks? Because I think that is a safe gap as well, where local banks are not willing to take the risk. Um, but that is the risk that the companies actually need. So I think first, if there's any, maybe not near term, but maybe longer term, so it's in terms of unlocking the bit of local time to do those ones. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for all the questions. Um, great answer to the first question with the work that we worked in the moment. And we have to continue to work on these calls for all these work. And on our website, you will find every information that you require. Yeah, you have told it that. that's why I've been saying it. So it's low, yeah, you can you can try it. What you need to know is to understand it. That's what's important. The next call for proposal will close on 10 April, and on 20th of March, we will have a webinar. Yeah, where myself and uh, my colleagues sit over there. Uh, we'll go to every single place, talk to talk with the template for the talk on the and say, no question being completely interested in ask them. We understand how this is going to fit. So, uh, it's usually there. And then, if we can discuss the help whether it makes sense, we can put in the effort. Yeah. At the end, and then our whole day, we, as common time, have, have the obligation to make sure that we, with all the risks that we take, we need to get our money back. So, that's the That's right. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very, thank you very much. Now, um, when can we do this? As I said, for many ten people. Yeah. So we can continue. We, we are, are looking at this and what we can do with core funding and we're building a pipeline for actual this is a complete independent we will have a running start yeah? uh, if somebody asks me when can we start the tech, I always say Monday because we have everything in tech. So it means we have time to make it. Your point with local funding is correct, and we look at this very, very carefully. We would not provide US dollars, new loan company where we are ourselves because we are not doing this about the paper. Now, what is around that? Around there are a number of guarantee funds all over the place. Have we ever managed to access one of those? No. And that is the company. And I don't know why, but I don't find any And yeah, local banks are reluctant and can do that. But, uh, and this is something that I really think if, if a donor agency or, or government is able to open up to a few funding, they should have a similar approach to what they do. I mean, guarantee you at the end of the new summer. The notion that comes back from the parents is that they don't need to be able to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Nicholas. I think we'll take one, one last question.
Okay, two, two questions. So one and one on this one. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you and all to the region gentlemen. I am going a little bit off topic. Thank you for the question. We are a small company in Canada. I think so much of my money when I left the time. I'm going to make money. Okay. I went straight down to the parents. We have been still at the bank. I traded back to where the money went. In Canada, about 100 times the amount of inspection we see every day. Don't put it on. And I do have a video that you should for you. What do you want for us? In order to go to where you are, because this is where we want to be. Dr. Howard, not the best. French, and we are having this big problem of being able to resolve our community. And I'm talking about 70% of what we need to do here. While we have the food available in our market, and every day they get touched about 100 pounds. And I have the mayor. Using the video, we are told you to make the video. What can we do to be able to participate in the video? So much from the community to invest into the picture and we can learn where we can see this in one day or we can get to the I'm sorry. And don't really have to answer me now. We can only answer me now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your, your passion is, uh, is infectious. I'm sure somebody on the panel will be ready to respond to your questions. We have one question on the side. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to know what you have in mind. All right. Uh, Nicholas, I guess that's the interest rate as well as the time uh, overpayment. Yeah. Um, the, the whole term sheet is that increase the interest again. Uh, or the, the package that we provide, yeah? Uh, the, the, the interest rate uh, is at the, what I always say, at the lower end of the market rate. Yeah? It is not for free, but it is in view of the whole thing. And uh, uh, one, one thing I can assure you is that if the investee wants to do the deal and the CFC wants to do the deal, the interest rate has never been the issue where it did not come to an agreement. Yeah? So it is, it is negotiable. But the other thing I think is more important is, is that you understand uh, uh, the agricultural calendar, that you make repayments accordingly, and that you have a longer break. And if I always tell people that's the last thing after we then agree on a loan sheet. If you stay honest to us and tell us when the problems are, when they occur, you can count on us. Yeah, and so it's a good time and it is a bad time. This is new patch, some rocky time, so you, and, and so we, we went through this together. Yeah? I, I think that that is a, one important thing that, that we take pride in that we do. Yeah? If you go for a CAPEX law, we extend it up to seven years, but that is rare and only if you really want to build up a new fruit tree farm because you need five years until, until you actually get your first fruit. So, that again is a, is, a, is a reflection. We look at each case individually, yeah, and make sure that you're not we're not going to strangle you. Hope it was wobbly enough. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Nicholas. I could see Ruth nodding heavily. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I just would like to com compliment my colleague on that question uh, from our respective participants from Senegal. Uh, honestly, what I like to say that uh, I, I'm, I, I work, we work in the Netherlands, okay, they are known for their directness, okay, <laughs> something got into us. First of all, you have to take care of them for them, pass by yourself. Then he come to us with your idea, 
That's how you want to address it. If you find your business case interesting enough and works well enough, they're all for it. But the way we work, it's totally bottom up. We don't want to kind of enforce anything on you. We have to come with a different idea. So please come to us. And we just want to let you know that, as Mr. Kunoti said, that we are not here for business. We are only for impact. We are how flexible we are, you cannot believe it. We have been so far maintaining this kind of very stubborn ticket size of 1.5 to 2 million US dollars, these things. But now, in our last call for proposals, we accepted uh, an application for only 300,000 US dollars. Why? Because the business case is so much of impact that we cannot say no. It is about that they are going to, you know, doing these things. Like I think Antat also be, I think we briefly discuss about this thing, you might think other things. So this business case, they are, they are going to using remote sensing and satellite technology to do land mapping in Cordobua, Ghana, and Indonesia. So with this fund, they will do this land mapping. They will primarily serve the, some of the businesses as their client, but we are trying to encourage them also to work with those governments in those countries so that these things can become a <clears throat> kind of a part of a bigger move. Because we all know that this land ownership, how big an issue. In Ghana, a lot of plantations that, uh, you know, the farmers are planting, they don't know it. They don't have any, any land right to them. So, and most importantly, in this kind of land issues, women are the losing part. So we are trying to bring those that kind of <coughs> new innovation. <coughs> Excuse me. So, <clears throat> for you, we we'll wait for your business case. And we are all for innovation. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. I think we'll take some uh, final comments from my panel. Yeah, I just wanted to ask well, we're, we're, we're on that obviously is not in the business of them, but I think we raised a very question. On the with regard to the waste of the and this is where we need to and this is where we are trying to deal with the comprehensive African agriculture development case and we decided in 2003 and then reaffirmed in 2013 in Malawi, where they all governments agree in Africa to ensure that 10 percent of the national budget is taken out. The 2021, 22, sorry, I've lost time. 2023, only the third Although agriculture is the main employer, you know, and these situations are the same only so from the policy side, we are trying to push this forward. In addition to that, they were trying to push this within that government invests not in subsidizing in food, but in, in invest in the production, in extension sets, in irrigation, in roads, in storage facilities. This is where we are pushing the policy now. So that the direction of the direction now takes a course of good to left. But I think the COVID crisis, and I think the peace crisis is going has really hit government all over Africa, and I think they are beginning to realize that they have to do something significant. So we keep on this narrative, we keep on pushing the system, so hopefully that will make the change and help me go. But I must say that besides common funds and commodities, there are many private equity and venture capital firms who are investing in agriculture. There is the Apollo in Kenya, which focuses on seeds, Fertilizer, expansion services, weather, market, and market. So, and storage, storage and market. So, and by the way, this is a Silicon Valley company. They're doing expensive services to this. They give the farmer the weather, they tell the farmer when to plant. 
the storage product so it does not uh, spoil, and they accumulate all the smallholder farmers together so that they can find a market and get a better price. So they're doing that now. And they have over 18,000 small for the farm. And they're expanding throughout that to the eastern. So on both sides, but there is there is farmers in there is so much to be done. Everybody has room to play in this game because there's so much. Fun. But on our side, on the policy side, we're trying to fix it. Just so you know, it takes time. Development was made tonight. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, we'll have a final word from um, Pinotti, and then we'll call it today. Thank you. Uh, our great uh, participants. Sorry, I always forget that I will yeah, uh, My sister from Canada, uh, your passion will not go to waste. I would only encourage you to take baby steps because for you to qualify for a uh, common part, for the act part, for example, you are seeing it's a tall order, but there are many other players um, around where you are. Uh, start from where you are because it's a good place to be. Uh, identify a sustainable market for what you're doing. Actually, um, for us, we grew a lot because we had already market with the uh, East Africa breweries for our server before we can start uh, processing it ourselves. Because of course, there is always a danger, again, of over-depending on one main market. So if you're able to add value yourself, and then you're selling uh, the value and the product, that would be a step in the right direction so that you're the first market. And every, every um, lender is looking to see how uh, sustainable your business is. If you're saying I'm buying to go and sell to so and so, so let's see, can you take whatever baby step you can take and start processing, add value to whatever it is that uh, the farmers are producing because uh, you, you become the first market. Number two, there are people, there are institutions like United States uh, Africa Development Foundation who are funding construction of the aggregation center. At least they have done uh, for uh, 12,000 farmers under, under our institution. So, so look out for anyone who can support your dream where you are. And within a few years, you'll be able to uh, know the uh, 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 yes, the ambassador as well, uh, because uh, I have told you we, we started far. I have mentioned people like Group Capital. Uh, I believe they are working all over Kenya, so probably uh, all over Africa, I mean, so probably they could be, yeah, they could come to uh, your level because they were able to listen to us. And Zappo Bank also, at least those two. Thank you. All right, thank you. Very finally, Ambassador Bilal. I uh, just uh, want to reiterate on what uh, Mr. Kunek said on the issue of value addition. I think, I think only about in last month, we had the President of Office and Development Bank. Uh, uh, I think 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 if you visit a cocoa plantation in Ghana or the Dogoa with a bar of chocolate, that farmer may not be able to relate that that chocolate bar came from the cocoa that is ready now to fly. This act fun is kind of a thing to do and an inspiration for that kind of We want new products to cross the border only after we act and bring more income to the country. We are all in the new and thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's put our hands together for all our panelists who joined us uh, virtually as well as here physically. And of course, to all of you for making time to be with us this evening. I wish you a wonderful evening.
Thank you, Sir Ann, for your great moderation.